Definitely the oddest intro location ever. There's the coffee pot. I'm at an airport hotel in Austin, Texas, where I just picked up a 1956 Buick Special two-door hardtop. This one's really unique, however. On the title here, the previous owner has my name on it. In fact, it has family history all the way back to the late 70s, early 80s. Of course, I'm just going to try to drive it 1,200 miles home. We're going to stop along the way, see some friends, do some cool stuff, and I'm going to take you guys with me. So why all the way across the country to Texas and why this Buick specifically? There's thousands of two-door Buicks, right? I want to learn on you some more history on it and then hopefully this will make more sense for you. Like I was saying, the previous owner was actually me. I had owned this car for, oh, probably about eight, nine years, somewhere around there. But before that, my father actually owned it and I tracked it all the way back to 79 or 80 is when I think he picked it up. He was the second owner and growing up my fondest memories involved this buick one way or another uh, i spent hours in between my grandpa and my dad in an old scottsdale pickup driving the junkyards and tree rows and old farmsteads and just in the hope that maybe we'd find you know a better headlight bezel or a better trim emblem um, in fact the first intake and four barrel i ever helped take off i was too young to do it myself uh, was a one off of a Riviera, I believe it was, or it was a Century. Had the four barrel, and that ended up on this special. And uh, another memory I have is one of those old metal pedal John Deere tractors. I had some twine with some sickles and guards and miscellaneous metal. I'm in a dirt floor shop, and I'm pedaling that thing around, just making a dust storm. Ten feet away, my dad's painting the car with a siphon feed gun, just doing his best to get it done for the parade, which I think was the next day. And just, I have a, thousands of memories like that. Fast forward, when my dad passed away, I took the car in, and it needed a lot of love. He did the best he could, you know, on a farm way up by Canada. Over the course of almost a decade, we stripped the thing down to nothing and did a full-on restoration. But unfortunately, when we were about 99.987% complete, I literally only had four trim pieces to put left on the car. It was involved in a fire. It was devastating to me. It was really hard to see it like that and just to think about going through that again. So I regrettably ended up selling the car and it bugged me every day. I spent literally 10 years looking for this car and i found it jumped on a plane i bought it over the phone I said give me a number i paid 50 percent more than what i sold it for that's fine and we're going to go take a look at it it was actually delivered last night in the dark um, so i didn't want to film or i didn't really get a close look at it so you guys are going to look at it with me for the first time in many many years it supposedly still runs we're going to hit the key and just hit the road and see what happens. I'm gonna do my best not to swing you down memory lane too often, but if I'm being completely honest, I'm making this more as a documentary for my kids and my family because it's never leaving my hands again. But I'm really glad you're here, along for the ride. Chances of me making it, 17.39%. This hallway is too long. I already see it through the glass over there. There it is, 1956 Buick, two-door hardtop. What makes this one fairly unique and low production is it came factory with power steering and power brakes. And the specials were kind of the entry-level Buick back then. It looks pretty dang good. Yeah, looks great. So the rear quarters, the trunk, all of this was fire damaged from about here back. All the stainless is still missing. I can actually see swirl marks from the fresher bodywork still in it. But it's not dented in. 
beat up. It really is a straight old car. I put thousands of hours into the bodywork on this. Hand sanded everything down to bare metal. My brother Sean helped me, Jessica helped me. There wasn't a speck of paint on this car. And the only Bondo in it was a little bit right here. And I believe, oh, well, right there where it's starting to bubble. Other than that, it was, it was really straight. Color sanded this thing, hands wet sanded it. I mean, it was a ton of work. This is new, that wasn't busted. I don't think the windshield was cracked either. He did put some new bumper parts on it, I guess. Yeah, so these are newer. That's definitely newer. I remember when that happened, my dad, uh, or no, I think we had a renter on the farm back some equipment into this and damaged that. A lot of memories. So this is the only pieces that I didn't finish was this stainless that's still off of it that comes up over the wheel. I never got that on and that's when it was in a fire. Never did find these taillight housings. I'm looking for new taillight housings. That's the way that was. Kind of bubbly. Awesome first sign. Coolant leaking from underneath of it. Looks like that's been dripping all night. What makes that even better is Growing up, it always had an overheating issue, so clearly still something going on. Great. Let's start the trunk. Guy likes to dig in back there, see what we got going on. Tell us the story, you know. Oh yeah, we got stuff. Lots of stuff. Oh, just a spare rad, just in case. That's nice. He did say he gave a brand new spare. That's really cool, actually. On a radio, owner's manual. It's got a battery. She's a Delco. Looks like this is the stainless. That's a lower arch. Door sill. Got some juices. That must be a car cover. Hood hinges. Shop towels. Headlight. So there's some miscellaneous stuff. There's a wiper motor. Some digital things. Huh. Looks like he put some carpet in or well there's some fire damage there actually. Some there too. I'll have to really dig in and see how bad it got. I can't quite remember. There's a closer look at that yellow. It's actually not that bad of a yellow. Now that I'm older. When I was young, I was obsessed with this black and white because it did have black and white interior from the factory. But now that I'm older, I might go back to yellow. I don't know. You guys let me know. This looks just like I remember it. Now the back here, he must have redone the seat carpet because all this was all this was messed up headliner messed up the deck lid so he's done quite a bit of work back here carpet looks great <laughs> definitely has a bondo grain bin <sighs> mice smell we got a triple smeller it always had a mice bondo kind of fresh paint spell there's a trim piece missing here this should have a it's a big i think it's plastic actually comes around right here have to look for that but yeah it's still in really decent shape this came apart this is supposed to be glued up in here I put this in he left that in there so the temp gauge used to work but we always had that heating issue so I put this in so we could actually make sure that it wasn't the gauge because I think these were like a mercury filled tube compared to like newer style technology. Same with oil pressure and then I put a tack in and then this used to be an electric fuel pump. Door panels, they're dirty, but they're there. This stain here, that's fire extinguisher residue. I think the other one has it too. 
Now originally I want to say that the ceiling had polka dots in it and I want to say that this wasn't ribbed like this and that also had polka dots but it was the black and white I can't can't quite remember that specifically let's pop the hood should have a 322 nail head under here nervous around this thing she's got some shine on her still 322 nail head and this thing used to sound just amazing had a nice rumble to it power steering power brakes again that was kind of odd for the special it took me forever to find that jug that washer jug looks like he's replaced the wiper motor but everything else looks pretty much the way I had it before this was off a different car so this rad must be a different one looks like he also added a transmission cooler which is nice to keep that Dynaflow nice and cool we're gonna be pushing it a little bit on the highway I think these do run 110 top speed but they like to cruise around 60 65 but overall I mean some of the wiring has changed and a few other things broken but man am I glad to have this thing back pretty dang good shape overall there are some you can see where they respray it well maybe you can't because it's black but there's a lot of just heavy scratches they didn't really finish out their primer very well when they sprayed the quarters but that's okay she's a good 15 footer well the battery was pulled for security purposes Ooh, left me a vice grip so i'm going to throw that back in here and then we'll just see if this thing fires right off really cool how you start these you turn it to on and then you mash the gas pedal to the floor and there's a little switch on the carburetor here that has a check valve in it and that's what actually engages the starter relay for the starter but this one's been changed to something different for now and i gotta fix that when i get home but let's throw this in here and i really hope it's charged because i don't have cables or tools or anything i literally have that vice grip the screwdriver and this plier 600 cold cranking apps that's not quite a lot but should hopefully work there we go check the oil click oh yeah that's pretty fresh actually got plenty let's twist on it see what happens Fired right off. Has that same sound I remember too. Looks like there might be a leak on the water pump. You see that build up down there. I guess I could check the miles when I sold this it at 50,640 miles and now it's got 53,910 so he's only put what is math 3,300 miles so that's not bad sounds great this is updated on oh, not working that's a uh, that's probably what this is. Plug your iPod in there, you know. Clocks never worked. Got cigarette lighter, lights over here. This is actually your two-speed wiper. They run on vacuum. It's pretty neat. Dynaflow shift pattern reverses at the bottom. Down there. Ashtrays are here. And over here. And then this is the 
speaker for the old radio and then that's your temperature control he did say it doesn't have a heater which is great because it's about 10 degrees and snowing at home so that's going to be fun driving through well this is a little different for me i usually don't pick up cars that run so i'm slightly confused what to do with my hands take first step let's put some fuel in it make sure all the gauges are working i gotta swing by a harbor freight pick up some tools do some general stuff and then I guess we're just going to stab it on the highway and see what happens. I only have a fraction of the camera equipment I usually have. So this is going to be Vice Grip Garage Blair Witch style. And what made me think of that is I don't have anything to charge any of my devices or GPS or anything. So hopefully that cigarette lighter works. We'll have to stop and get something for that or I'm going to have to wire something into the battery, some sort of converter or something. First stop, gas station. Hopefully this fuel gauge works. That's gonna be a nightmare. And then we'll go pick up $72 in junk tools. That'll work. It's got drive. Horn works. We're good to go. What else do you need? Temperature is at 190 already, and I haven't even pulled out of the lot. And it's probably 74 out so that still could be an issue i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that i'm guessing this thing's only going to get about 10 miles to the gallon but we'll have to see i'm going to run 93 in it actually i'm not because that contains ethanol so i'll run the 89 and then since it's such a long trip we're going to be pushing it pretty good i'm actually going to find some lead substitute if i'm just bebopping them around town i don't worry about it but we're gonna be up there in the Ripums. Yeah, and lead substitute just helps the valve trains. These don't have hard seats on them. So I'll have to add that to the old shopping list as well. Well, guy miles will test on it right away. Have a feeling we'll be driving through a bunch of rain, definitely snow. Miles will see if she's sealed up right away. I can already see it's not, that's fine. This felt's missing, but this has a nice, watch this, when I open the door, that flips up. Isn't that cool? So it should be pretty sealed from the top. I'm just kind of worried around here how it's going to leak. I put all new rubber in this when I did the car. But again, that was 10, 11 years ago. It's nice there just happened to be a touchless wash here. Swing back over here. Brakes seem to be working I didn't even think to look or check anything <laughs> I'm just so used to not having them Thank you. you're welcome the wash is ready. You pull it is in use it's in use okay these little crank windows are nice on Buick's you gotta lock them down there we go I can see outside right there I just noticed that's fine that side looks whoa we gotta go this way what we, oh, <laughs> it was in Neutralis. It's holding at 190. How am I supposed to know when to stop? Okay, what's that mean? There's no indicators in here as far as what in the world is going on. Also, I've never seen a car wash without walls. I guess that's a thing down here. There's a towel right here. I wonder if that's what this is for. I hope it is. Is this a bathroom floor rug? I don't know. We're just putting it over here. It's already violently hot in here. I got the really cheap one, you know, so it's short in case it just goes sideways. Oh, it's bad. Oh no. Front vent window, major spillage. Where is it even coming in at though? Oh, everywhere. It's not good. The door gaps are wrong. That's my fault. Dang it. Back window, solid. Well, I got that one right. All right, shut it down. I don't need any more. I'm good. Turn it off. No. Oh, that's the issue. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Got it. Can I just leave? Well, overall, that went really good, I thought. I'm trying to exit. Okay. I forgot what I was doing. I think I was going to get tools or something. Oh, fuel gauge. That's what it was. It works. 
says we're on full 53910 so that I can do my fuel millage. All right, jump around the intro state here and see what happens. Yep. Feels good. Been clipping along for about 15 miles now. Seems to be doing fine. It's at 195. Somewhere right around there. These 322s originally came with a two barrel. And again, we swapped a four barrel onto this one. So I'm trying to find where I can keep my foot out of that four barrel for fuel mileage, but also go at a decent speed. If you're wondering, these miles are original. So I'm fairly confident in that respect, but it's old and Nail heads are not easy to get parts for at all. So this is really just, you know, we're just winging it basically, hoping for the best. They have a lot of power stations in Texas. No one there. Made it to the first destination. Very specific reason why I came to this town. One, there's an advanced auto parts. I got a gift card that a fan sent me. Malsy used that. There's also a Walmart, guy needs to go in the town shirt. I didn't bring much at all. Harbor Freight right down the street. And also there's a Whataburger. What, what, what a burger? Anywho, guy's never eaten at one of them. Right now it's floating between 190 and 200, which I think will probably be okay. I'm gonna get some water wetter, some of that lead substitute, a couple other things in here. Gotta get an air freshener, of course. And then we'll just make the rounds, get everything else taken care of quick while I'm here in town. Guy grabbed some hyper cool. It's green. I don't know. It's got a flag on it. It says it does cooling stuff. Throw that in there, see if it brings it down anymore, or maybe it's just going to stay. And the oil is, seems fresh, or at least tastes like it. But I don't know what kind you put in there, if it has zinc in it or not. So I bought a zinc substitute, and I'll just throw that in the oil. It's a must for flat cabin dams. And then I found lead substitute, but they only had one bottle. And this treats 20 gallons, which is the tank. So I'm gonna have to scoot around town a little bit more, try to find some more of that. And then of course, I got some America flavor trees here. Pop them in. Gonna check the trans fluid real quick. See what we got going on there. I got to thinking about it. That's probably my biggest scare. I did rebuild the transmission or had someone rebuild the transmission when I got the car because my dad only ever had low. He literally drove this car everywhere, 30, 35 miles an hour. I had it rebuilt the first time, lasted maybe 50 miles, and then found another expert, had it rebuilt again. And I'm assuming that's what's in it now, but man, it's really hard to find guys that know how to work on Dynaflows. So I really want to make sure we take care of that thing. Completely empty. Well, the transmission's empty. I mean, there's not even a drop on it. Hopefully the damage isn't already done. It's just such a hurry this morning. The nerves were just rattled, you know? So I'm gonna go back inside, get some go make it happen or juice, fill that up, put the rest of this in it, and then I need, I think I'm just gonna, we'll do the cheeseburger thing, I think. That's what I gotta have. I thought this would be like maple syrup, but just like consistency of 1030 or something like that. This guy's getting set up. I got a digital readout holder. The cigarette lighter works. I'll be dipped. Now I can charge on that. And then leaving Harbor Freight, and this is what I picked up. I grabbed these Pittsburgh. 225 piece sets these are like 129 dollars i think but i mean this thing has i've never really had a time where i didn't have the tool i needed out of this thing i guess is what a guy's trying to tell you and it goes up to some half inch stuff so you can even do some wheel lugs not really supposed to but it works this is junk but it'll work in case of a flat it's 30 bucks and then 
I like on these flashlights for those that are emerge OCs. So I think that's it. You know, I always just wing these trips. I don't really have a plan. But looking at the digital map here, I'm going to be going right by some good friends of mine, Lance, Wyatt, and Christian. They have a YouTube channel called Restored. And I gave them a call, and they said, absolutely, come on by. They've got a lift, so I think I'm going to put this on the lift. We can get underneath of it, take a look at some things. Torque tube, torque ball, probably the wheel bearings, maybe even put some oil on the rear end if there's even any in it probably not yeah, and get a little shop tour while we're there maybe they've got a lot of really cool neat bizarre stuff and uh i'll take you guys with i don't think i'm gonna get all the way there tonight we'll try it was 289 miles i think from here which will probably take me five or six hours at the speed i'm cooking but we'll do our best now i just i'm not used to keys where did that go now? get some fuel the gauge is reading just less than half but i don't know what we're getting for the mpgs so i'm going to quackumulate that out real quick temps hold steady right at 200 now but i might be pushing it a little bit harder than i should I'm doing a lot of 65 70 speed limit's 80 out here and i just i got people just ripping by uh got 165 miles left it's saying so we're making some slow time. That's okay. I like this ease and this thing is the most comfortable car I have ever driven in my life. It's like sitting on grandma's couch basically. I'm gonna fill up, throw it into the old phone here and see if we got any parts stores, try to get some more lead additive and then just keep on rocking. Yeah, I found two more bottles of lead. That'd be plenty for now. I did the calculations on MPGs and I had to do it a couple times. It's getting 15.1 miles per gallon. I just, we sure think we're something else today with all of this here engine nerding and whatnot. And, and we pulled off 15 miles to the gallon in a 1956 Buick, just jamming it down the interstate, loaded full of junk. That's just, how's your brain feeling? Cause mine's bottled up. We got ice cream truck? Sure enough. Anyway, sun's going down. We got to keep scooting. Someone's getting arrested. Wasn't me. I don't know where I'm at, but I just I'm going to I'm going to get out of here.
Good morning. I made it in pretty good last night. Car ran really good. Could tell when I got off the highway though, it does need a ignition adjustment, timing. And then the fuel will make it happen or we gotta twist on them a little bit. You might be wondering, why did I just jump in and take off like that? I've never really done that before. And the reason I had so much confidence is I literally touched every single nut, bolt, and screw in that entire car, bumper to bumper, roof to frame. But as I was trying to shut the eyes off last night, I got to thinking, that was 10 years ago, maybe more. There's a whole lot that can happen in that amount of time. I never even got to shake the thing down. So I'm gonna be a lot more cautious today. I'm gonna run over to my friend's shop, Lance Wyatt Christian. They have a channel on YouTube called Restored and they're letting me use their lift. We could put it up on that and just really pull the sheets back on this thing and see what we got going on. But so far everything's been going really good. Never mind, cancel that. Looks like we got something Oh, I hope that's not trans. No, oh, that's coolant. So that little coolant leak has now turned into this. So I'm going to do the right thing and just pretend I didn't see that, basically. Still just fire it up and head right there. They're really close. I'm hoping it's not the radiator itself. I guess I do have the other one in the trunk, but that might have been the cause of it heating up all these years. Kind of hard to say. I'm gonna stop by the parts store quick. And then let's just rip over there and see if we can figure out what's leaking in here. It is hotter than Shakira's two piece in here and I ain't kidding. Let's see if this thing fires right off today. Seems like we got battery. Gauge came up. Give her one pump. Look at that. Hold her up at a little higher aisle here for a minute. I think I might also get this tack plugged back in. I'm not sure why that got disconnected. I think I'm running at about 24, maybe 2500 RPM. And if that's the case, I can bring that up a little bit. 2800, 2900, that won't hurt anything. And maybe make some ground up faster. I mean, yesterday I drove for I think eight hours and that was less than 300 miles. I guess I did stop a lot because what's that average? Not sure. It's really bad as far as the MTHs. So when I hit the road again, I got to just try to bite down on it. How's it going, man? Oh, pretty good. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. So, we're at the restored shop here. Lance, Wyatt, and Christian, you guys have kind of started off a new channel a few months ago. Yes, sir. And uh, you've got some really cool stuff out here. <laughs> well, some people think it's cool. Other people don't think it's junk. But, yeah, we're into anything out of the ordinary. That's for sure. So. we got a spray coop, sand rail, a bus, an Izetta, pickups, a Hummer. This is pretty awesome. Do you mind if I walk around a no, little bit? Not at all. Make yourself at home tour. and uh, just watch out for snakes. Oh, <laughs> all right. I appreciate the heads up. And then the lift, which you guys have been kind enough to let me use, I appreciate that a lot. I'm trying not to roll around on my belly much anymore, so uh, that'll I'll be you. real handy. So we'll get the Buick in there in a little bit if you don't mind. I just want to check underneath of it. And, Make yeah, sure feel free to make yourself at home. You'll be the first guinea pig to actually use it. I've used it to lift off bodies and stuff on it, so not not a full frame vehicle yet. So. If it tips over, <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> they got so much stuff out here. The guy's pretty excited for when I get some land, I'll be able to do this. Look at this speedboat. 
That's gonna pull at least 25, 28 miles an hour, probably. I saw this service truck over here. I'm gonna go ahead and jot that down on the list. Got two of them. All sorts of weird stuff. They got this running on a live the other day, bubble top. It's really cool. Tried to buy this truck already, but I don't have enough dinero. Really nice pickup. These guys do some cool stuff. They're about into everything, as you can see. Hot rods, unique, whatever else, but I was basically driving right through here, so there was no way I wasn't gonna stop. So I think I'm gonna back this car and so I was like we gotta back it in the way the lift is set up, get it lifted up and see what's going on underneath this thing and hopefully fix that radiator leak whatever's going on there. So he's gonna help me kind of just walk through here and see if we can see anything out of the norm. Look at all the bushings and stuff like that and just take advantage of having this up in the air like this. And there's the 322. That's kind of the Shakira of oil pans. I mean, that thing is there. You got the Dynaflow. The boot on the starter is gone. That's actually, looks like fire damage. So that'll need to be fixed at some point and those freeze plugs look nasty that one looks really suspect i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that and i think oh yep sure enough see this lower rad that is about to pop and i don't have one how many miles do you think i got left in that <laughs> she's about to give out any moment aren't she? yeah it's kind oh, of rubbing up against that cross member a little bit there but Oh yeah, need a soda can around it or something. <laughs> oh shoot, I need a radiator hose. There's no parts store in this town, right? Nah, about 20 miles. We do have some tape. Alright. <laughs> Might get me back to town. Looks like the gentleman put new shocks on it. I was hearing some clunking back here, but I'm wondering if it almost ain't the exhaust bind it up on something because it's only when i hit bumps not sure what that was but these buick rear ends are neat kind of look like the four nine and then this is a torque tube so instead of your traditional drive shaft the shaft is enclosed and then it runs up here to what's called a torque ball and that's kind of like a universal joint and that's why these nail heads and dynaflows usually aren't swapped out is because then you got to come in and change the whole rear end. In the rear end you can put Riviera, Wildcat, the Sabre, stuff like that. But then you got to match all the perches. So you really kind of got to know what's going on. And then this frame is really cool. So you've got the exterior frame and then you've got this X pattern. I mean these things were just built like tanks back then. I don't ever remember this. That must have been my dad. Took a shortcut to a field. Too many old Milwaukee's or something. Hard to say. But. Tie rod in, maybe. But yeah, I think we're. I'm not seeing anything else that's really standing out, are you? Did you see this right for you to tie that in? No. Yeah, I got a pretty good little link there. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. Have to get a flashlight in there. Something's leaking. Figures. Right when I thought about the first car ever that had brakes, they're going to go out. This is that dupe, uh, dupe the color 
I think it's 1634 low gloss paint. I've been using this for years. That's been on it for 10 years and it's still holding up. I like to see that because I'm still using it. So, but everything else looks pretty good. Got some rust starting in here again, unfortunately. A little bit right here. I don't know. This was probably redone. Well, it had to have been. But when I did the paint, there was a little bit of bondo right here and a little on the other side, and that was it in the whole car. So, guy put a new tank in it. This bumper shot. If you've got a 56 bumper, I need it. Give me a price. So we just noticed a shake on these. We got a little bit back and forth, which is tie rod ends, but when we lift it up and down, I think the wheel bearings are a little loose. So I'm gonna pop the inspection caps off and see if we can maybe snug them down. I don't think the bearings are bad. It doesn't sound bad, but I just wanna put a little bit more pressure on them. If they sit like this, they'll probably prematurely wear out. This car has four different hubcaps from four different Buicks on them and they're still not perfect. They're supposed to be a dark grayish black insert in all of these. And I think one of them, I spent like nine months painting with a model brush and it looked really bad. Oh, and apparently I spray painted the back because that makes it dark red out here. I'll be. Lance is trying to work on his stuff and I'm just yelling at him to get me tools. But he's super nice, so I don't think he minds. Sometimes this will happen if you put new wheel bearings in and you just go until it feels tight and put the pin in and leave it. You're supposed to put them to like 10, 12 pounds, then back them off and that seats them in there. But this has got a wobble. Oh, there you go. It was only finger tight, but we'll take a look at it and see. By the way, this is Buick, so left-hand thread. A lot of you might be wondering what's going on here. Well, I don't see anything abnormal. Sounds fine. So I'm just going to give her a little more oomph, and I think we're good to go. So the captain's side was just loose. The drinker side over here, we've got bad news. It's not completely shot but the outer piece you can see this groove in there and i don't have one of those micrometer reader upper deals but my eyes are still good enough that i can see this is not a new wheel bearing and it's been in there for probably all of the 55,000 miles the car has so it's going to need a wheel bearing on this side pretty soon i think i might be able to get a thousand miles out of this thing but if i'm going to be looking for a rad hose Guy might as well try to find this bearing at the same time. And they might have it on the shelf, probably not. If I could find like a national bearing or something. So tightening down this side more is not gonna do anything. It's just gonna put more stress on the race. So I'm gonna snug her up again and just have to keep checking it or maybe we'll replace it. Well, I think we kind of fixed it for now. They got maybe some other hoses. We'll go take a peek quick, but if not, I'll just try to track down another one and we'll just swap this in a motel lot or something later on, but that's gonna go a couple more heat cycles. That thing's gonna pop. And then we noticed it's pushed against the frame up here and that's because this is that bigger rad and there's that spacer up there and that's pushed this back probably an inch and an eighth. That's where that's happening. So I'm going to do the right thing and just wrap a cold snacks can around that. Keep the rubbing down just a hair. But everything else, got a little bit of an oil leak off the pump up there. But everything else is looking, well, let's be honest, it's in a lot better shape than a lot of things I've driven home. So. But this makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. I don't think I've ever done a 1,200 mile trip with something this old. So it's just nice having a little more comfort. So I get her back down on the ground and hunt for a hose. 
and then it's time to hit the road again pretty soon. Well, I think that's going to do for part one of this adventure. Guy needs to try to find some parts for this thing. Big thank you to Lance and Wyatt at the restored shop here. And you can't forget Christian behind the scenes. They've got more stuff wired into this building than a dang bank. And I ain't kidding you. Well, anyway, this is a dry county, so I'm going to do the right thing and just keep driving it around until I can find some cold snacks, then part store. See you next time.